Hey, it's Jeff Sauer here representing JeffLytics.com and my audience has spoken. You've resoundingly said that you want me to create a video on how to use the Google Analytics API to create a report. So that's what we're going to do in this video. I don't need a lot of preamble. We are going to go into the Google Analytics API and we're going to show you how to create a report. I'm not sure if it's going to work or not. I actually haven't pre-planned this thing. It may work, it might not work, but you're going to learn a lot. You're going to learn from me and we're going to go ahead and reward you for being an awesome subscriber for following along for our 90 day challenge and we're going to build something with the Google Analytics API. So let's get into our Google Analytics API tutorial. Before we start I just want to mention that this is a callback. This is a callback to another video we did in the 90 day challenge and that is day three. Yes I was clean shaven and things were so innocent then. We had this grand dream of doing 90 videos in 90 days and we're still on track with that. I'm happy about it. Hopefully you're happy about it too. Now during this video, video number three, I talked about creating a report in Google Analytics and the conclusion was that we can't create this report in the Google Analytics interface. So we wanted to try something new. We wanted to try to put this into the Google Analytics API. And so I asked you to leave comments at the end of the video and you overwhelmingly said that you want me to create a Google Analytics API tutorial. And that made me happy because I wanted to create this tutorial, but if it wasn't for your comments, I wasn't going to do it. Really, I could have spent my time elsewhere. And you persuaded me to create a Google Analytics API tutorial. So it turns out you did want me to create an API tutorial and that's what we're going to do in this lesson. But first, I have to warn you the API can't actually deliver the report that we talked about. So it wasn't possible to do in the Google Analytics interface and it's not possible to do in the API either. And so that's a major bummer. But the API can still do a lot of cool stuff. So I'm still going to do an API tutorial anyway. And I'm going to show you my exact thought process when it comes to building reports. So let's check it out. Let's go into Google Sheets and I'm going to show you exactly how to use the API using Google Sheets and your Google Analytics data. Okay, so here we are back inside the web browser where we spent a lot of time in the past, but haven't been spending much time in recent videos. And we're gonna do a live demo of the Google Sheets add-on for the Google API, or vice versa, the Google Analytics spreadsheet add-on. Now, if you go to this page, we can choose the Google Analytics spreadsheet add-on, and it's gonna take us to this page. Within Google Sheets, there's an add-on. It's a free add-on that you can add to Google Sheets. So if I click on this plus free here, bam, we are in a untitled spreadsheet. And I'm gonna call this thing our awesome demo of Google Analytics. And you see here's a little warning here, Google Analytics. If you need help, please visit the add-ons Google group. So there's a whole group on how to do this thing but we are experts or we're gonna become experts, so we don't need no help. We're just gonna do it ourselves. We're gonna break stuff. We're gonna see what happens when we go through this tutorial. So if I click on add-ons, you can see here there's a Google Analytics one and we're gonna create a new report. Now when we create a new report, it starts working in the background a little bit and then you're gonna notice on the right-hand side, we have all kinds of different things we can focus on. Now we're gonna go into the Google Merchandise Store, which is called Demo Account, and we're gonna create Merchandise merchandise store report number one. And that is the beginning of a beautiful friendship with us and the Google Analytics API. Now we need to build a report in the API that has certain metrics and certain dimensions. So if we go back to our original video number three, Elgi wanted to create a report that had product revenue, product quantity, the product that was purchased, and e-commerce conversion rate. So we're gonna go through and we're gonna create these things. So if I type in the word product, we can see product revenue here. We can do product again. Or actually, if you just type in the word quantity and we have our quantity here as well, we can look in the product in this case. If we go up here, we can type in product, we can find the product name, and then we can also type in e-commerce conversion rate. So these are all available to us in the Google Analytics API. Now, if you remember back to our previous video about e-commerce reporting in Google Analytics, we thought that we could make this report work. And the reason why we thought we could make it work is because Google told us that it would work. So if we create this report, everything should be smooth sailing. So I'm gonna click on create report and I wanna see what happens. Okay, so we've created a report and what is really happening here is that we have a second tab that was added to our spreadsheet. Our sheet 
that we started is empty, but we have a report configuration. Now this doesn't actually have any data in it. This is just the configuration of our report. Now this is an important distinction because just because you can dream it doesn't mean you can necessarily do it. But Google lets you make your definitions and play around with them and see if it will work. So what I want to do now is if you go back into your add-ins tab, you can go to Google Analytics and hit run reports and we'll see if this works. Oh no, this doesn't work. So this report failed due to errors. And it says that this one is because we don't have sufficient permissions to use this profile. So Google is locking us down and we can't actually create a merchandise store API report. And that is because of the level of access that we have with the merchandise store account. Now this is unfortunate because it's way easier to plan these things out and to show you data from the Google merchandise store, which is already populated. So we're gonna have to go through an alternative and I'm gonna have to show you a different report coming from a different area. So let's go back to our Google Analytics add-on and we'll go to analytics and we're gonna create a new report. Now I'm gonna call this report merchandise store, merchandise store report two. And I'm gonna go from a different account that's not related to the merchandise store that does have e-commerce data. And we're gonna see if we can make this thing work. So going back to our definition here, we can go in and we can type in quantity. That part is there. We can also type in that we want to have our revenue. And we want product revenue. Now there's a difference between revenue and product revenue. Revenue is revenue for the entire transaction. Product revenue is just for that particular product. So we click on that. Now we wanna do another one where we have our e-commerce conversion rate. And then finally, we're gonna do a dimension and that one's gonna be the product. So I'm gonna run this and see what happens here. We're gonna create the report. Now again, it doesn't actually run a report, it just creates a new definition. Notice that we have a second account here that we're looking at and we should see if this works or not. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back to my add-ons menu. I'm gonna run this report and we have two errors. Error number one, we don't have permissions. Error number two, selected dimensions and metrics cannot be queried together. Okay, so this is the same suspicion that we had when we were running Google Analytics in our other video because these things can't be combined together. Now here's the reason why. You notice here we have transactions per session, that is our e-commerce conversion rate. We have item quantity and item revenue, and then we have product name. Now transaction per session is our conversion rate that's happening per session but then an item is actually part of a transaction that's happening so not every session has a transaction and so these are a different scope and that's the reason why these things don't work so i have a suspicion that if we get rid of the transaction per session we should be able to see something of value in here now what i can do is i can just go in here and i can delete transactions per session and see if that works. Or we could go back and we could build another query. For the sake of time, I'm just gonna delete that out there and I'm gonna go back to the add-on and I'm gonna try running this again. So if I run this report, let's see what happens. Now we know we're gonna have one error because we don't have the permission for the merchandise store, but our second report was actually successfully created. Pretty cool, right? So if we go in here, we can see now there's a second tab added this is brand new, it's new to the spreadsheet and it was created by the API, we can see exactly what we're looking for. We can see the results breakdown, we can see the product name, we can see the quantity and the product revenue. Now in this case, what I've done is I've decided to blur out the product name because I don't think it's relevant to this tutorial. But what you can see here is that we got the report that we're looking for, at least some of it. Now we don't have all the data we're looking for, but we do have some of it. And this is the beginning of how you want to use this API. You can take a look here and you can see, okay, well, what product was there, how many quantity were ordered, and how much revenue came in from that product. And that is pretty awesome if you ask me. It's a really cool way to see these things side by side. And really, it was pretty painless to create this report through the Google Analytics API. And if we want to, we could use this add-on in order to create any type of query that we want within Google Analytics. Now, what type of report would you want to run? Oftentimes, these reports are necessary if you don't want to go into the interface and pull data down, you can use this type of reporting mechanism. If you want to compare things, if you want to do custom reports, this is a good way to do it. I don't think you need to use the API for every single possible use 
of a report. It might be a little bit too cumbersome. It might take more time than you need it to, but it can be a nice way to do the repetitive reports that you're looking at all the time. So we might create like a traffic source report. And let's just go in Jeffalytics and we're gonna look for the number of sessions that happen. We're gonna look at the source medium. And we're just gonna get the top traffic sources coming into the site over the time period we're looking at. Let's create that report and see what happens. If we go back to our report configuration, we can see here we have our traffic sources report. We're looking at 30 days ago until yesterday. That's the default window. We can change the time window if we'd like to. And there actually are ways that you can order and you can filter. There are different things you can do in order to make this report run better in the future. But for now, we're just getting started. So we're just gonna do the last 30 days looking at traffic sources and we're gonna do it in an automated way. We're gonna generate this report. Now remember, this one's not gonna run because we haven't changed the data and it's both not the right level of access as well as the metrics don't all work together, but these other two should work fine. So if we click on add-ons, we're gonna run this again and we can see here, okay, that's an error. A new tab was added, our traffic source report. And we can see here that we have our traffic sources that have come in from the Jeffalytics website. This is not capped, it's all traffic and it's all raw. And this is probably overwhelming to deal with this data, probably a little bit too much. And so we would need to go and make some changes to our definitions in order to make this look proper. So we've had 18,000 sessions. A lot of those sessions have been increased as a result of doing the 90 day challenge. We're getting pretty close to reaching our goal already. And I can see us getting even further because of this 90 day challenge. That's just a sidebar. But what we wanna do is we wanna keep on improving this report. So we're gonna go back to our configuration and we're gonna order by and then we're gonna choose, I'm just gonna try typing in something here. I'm not sure if this is gonna work or not, but I'm just gonna try GA sessions. Now, normally you'd probably wanna type in, you know, all capitals or, or however it looks on the nice label there. But since we're using the API, you need to use the language that they use and they call it GA sessions. So I'm gonna try running this again and we're gonna see what happens. Okay, so we've done this and we have sorted by sessions and notice it is sorted by sessions, but it's not descending, it's ascending. So it's starting with one and going down. Anybody who knows me and anybody else who has any kind of level of sanity knows this report's pretty much worthless. So we're gonna go back to the drawing board and we're gonna try to order by sessions and we're gonna do descending. Now, I personally don't know the exact syntax for order descending in the Google Analytics API, so I'm gonna look it up. And this is one thing you'll know about me is that I have to look a lot of things up because even if you're smart, even if you know these things, even if you've done it for a long time, you don't always know the exact context of how these things work. So I'm gonna look up how to do an order by statement within the Google Analytics API. So here I am in the Google Analytics API documentation. We'll link to this in the write-up on Jeffalytics. And you can see here, if you want to do descending, apparently all you need to do is add a minus sign prefix on the requested field. Now, this probably sounds like rocket surgery to you. It does to me as well, but I'm going to give it a try. I think that it just means that I need to put a minus before the GA session. So I'm going to give that a shot, and we're going to see what happens here. So now we're back at our report, we ran it, it was successful, and we can see here that it is showing descending order. So it's showing where things are coming in, where people are coming from, and our different traffic sources, which is pretty awesome. Pretty cool to see this in action. It makes me happy to see this. Now I don't know about you, I'm gonna show you one last thing that you can use to limit the scope of what you're showing in your results. And that is, do you wanna see all these results, anything under 10? I don't. And so I wanna see only sessions that are greater than 10. So we're gonna go back to our report configuration and we're gonna see if we can do that. Again, I'm winging it. I'm just flying by the seat of my pants to see if this thing can happen. But I think it's a filter and I think it's GA sessions and I think it's gonna be greater than 10. I hope this works. I might've broken everything, but I'm gonna try running this one more time 
and we'll see what happens here. So we're gonna run this thing. We're gonna get our standard error message. We're gonna look at our report and it did it. It showed it and it's a miracle. It's a Festivus miracle. It's some kind of miracle. I don't know what it is, but this is pretty awesome. I didn't know if this was gonna work. I was really apprehensive about doing this tutorial because I knew that the e-commerce report probably wasn't gonna work, but hopefully this turned into something useful by seeing our results, seeing how things come through, and seeing how we can continue to find value for ourselves, seeing all the traffic that comes in. This is not something that takes a long time to do. You're pretty much watching me do it in real time. It's pretty cool to see this happen. The API is very empowering. There's so many things you can do with this. You can take your traffic sources, for example, and you can insert a chart. So let's just insert a chart, and there we go. The top traffic sources that come into Jeffalytics in a chart form. We did that in 10 minutes or less. You can do it yourself. All you need to do is follow the instructions in this video, and you can do some awesome stuff. And so that's where I'm gonna leave this tutorial of the API. This is where I'm gonna leave the browser and we're gonna recap what we've learned in this video. So it's time to recap the API tutorial steps. Step one, find the Google Sheets add-on and the information behind it. Step two, install the plugin into your Google Sheets. You can simply click on that free button and it will be installed into a sheet itself. Create your report definition. Now you can do any kind of report definition you want. Chances are it probably won't work the first time and you might be intimidated by that, but notice how we got out of it pretty quick just by trying new things and being innovative. It's pretty easy to refresh something. So if you get it wrong in the first try, you have plenty of time to go ahead and get it right. Finally, run your report and get the results and start creating awesomeness within Google Sheets and sharing it with your organization. This is pretty cool, right? This is a very basic, introduction into the Google Analytics API. Even though it's using a plugin, you basically did the equivalent of somebody writing code, tapping into Google Analytics, getting the right information and bringing it back into a spreadsheet and being able to do any type of analysis and manipulation you want to on that data. Pretty awesome. So finally, I'm gonna leave you with this. Do you wanna see more of these? Do you wanna see me doing more API tutorials? Leave a comment with the report that you want me to build and we'll build it for you if we get enough comments and we get enough upvotes, we'll build it for you in another video. I would love to do it. I'm fascinated by the API. I like helping people out. I like helping people like you out. So if you're interested in this and if you wanna see more, if this just whet your appetite, leave us a comment, let us know how much you wanna see it. And that's what's gonna keep us going. Your comments are the only reason why I created this video this time, because you wanted it. If you want more, let us know. And while you're at it, join our free Google Analytics mini course at analyticscourse.net, where we teach you all of the awesome things about Google Analytics, how to get certified in 30 days or less. Mm -hmm.